Welcome back to Twitch Play D&D. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! <laughs> this is the only D&D show where you get to spend channel points to roll on a table of 100 options and somehow end up having the PCs kick a tin can at the exact moment they're trying to sneak into a camp. Oh my god. Like, I don't even understand. <laughs> That's I'm so good. your dungeon master, Sobi, and we are live with episode five of Twitch Plays D and D: Curse of Strahd. As always, joining us today we have the affable Alex. Hey guys, welcome back. The valiant Victor. The majestic Maki. And the jaunty Jordan, who is playing as the character that chat controls. Jaunty indeed. Hello, chat. <laughs> if this is your first time joining us, then text your mom right now to let her know that you're going to be busy doing something totally awesome for the next few hours. Throughout the session, you'll see polls on screen asking about how you'd like Roland to react to certain situations or how you'd like to affect the story in general. Type in the number that corresponds to your favorite option and we'll handle the rest. Which brings us to our opening, opening poll! <laughs> <laughs> it's been two weeks. I forgot about that. <laughs> Who do the Vistani seem to distrust, chat? Ooh. This is your opening poll. Um, for anyone oh, who... Uh, we haven't disclosed this fully yet, but the Vistani will be some a group of people that the party will be encountering very soon. To oh. this magical... Tide! Yeah. Hi. I thought Roland was the winner when I hit finish. Oh. Well, it seems that the Roland and Cheek. Well, you know, it's it's our synergy. You know, we're just we're in sync, you and I. Yes, we are you very chaotic together. together. So, previously on Twitch Plays D and D, in the bowels of the creepy house, you entered a stone altar room and tricked the cultists into believing you were there to help with the ritual. You are interrupted by the heroic Rusty Shackleford, who sadly fell right into the cultist trap, allowing them to summon a shambling flesh pile that began to attack. There were crazy spells, Delphini flew, and Clement <laughs> ate bread. It was incredible. <laughs> Eventually, Roland dove headfirst into the monster and found a crying baby Walter at its core. He cut Walter free, and the monster melted away, but only after it crashed into a wall, causing the stone room to cave in. You escaped, blessed the house, and lifted the curse. With that, you leveled up, and are all Woo! now level four. <laughs> Might be loud. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> With Thank the you. help of your temporary Thank companion, you. Yogi the Bear, you soon found some dragonborn footprints in the mud and followed them into the forest, coming upon a small camp filled with metal structures held together with red magical energy. As you cautiously approached, one of you accidentally kicked a tin can, alerting the nearest guard. Thanks to <laughs> Decoria for spending channel points to roll on our D100 table of mysteries, which resulted in that happening. So, with her rapier drawn, she asked, uh, looking at Roland and the group, who do you serve? Roland, would you remind us and, what you said? And Roland, having stumbled up somewhat drunkenly, put his arm around Clement, I, I believe it was Clement, and uh, using his silent in incantation, played a harmonious chord behind and said, we sir, the music and then he did a flourish <laughs> and she at this moment lowers her sword pulls out a small wooden pan flute and goes and you see purple streaks of light emit out of the pan flute and they float around her throat and she says to you wow you you seem really rad oh wait <clears throat> and she points at her throat Rad, yeah, I must exclaim. So, what's your name? And she's looking, and she's looking at all of you. What, what manner of of sorcery flows from your mouth? Ah, this. We've never well, heard such a thing. I'm practicing with some new magic, of of a sort, and I found a way to alter my voice. 
This is probably Dang. the first time some of you have seen Delphine nervous, and she's like, "Yeah, that's <laughs> that's really cool." Yeah. And I can smell See the smoke. The smoke in the back. Yep, that's us. Smoke. I don't see no I... smoke. Are, are you smoking? I would like to clarify. Uh, the smoke wasn't necessarily. We're not bad. We're not dangerous. Uh, no, there, it was there, there was a smoke. <laughs> right, there, there was it's a good. cult. There was a fall. lady with a big long tongue and some kids that ascended into the sky. It's a whole big ordeal. What, 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 you guys, uh, I, are, are you okay? Did something bad happen to you? This sounds like a crazy story. I mean, it hasn't been a great oh, night. Was. Was and Delphine, make a persuasion check for me, as you said, like, hey, we're not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're good guys here. <laughs> Persuasion. That's what bad, right. bad people say. Like, yeah, I guess that not, is not the best bad. thing to say. But we also were just like, yeah, we just got back from setting this house on fire. <laughs> All right. You, please, you can stay with us tonight. We'll have many, many questions for you. Ori Nalo. Yes. Excellent. Ori Nalo. Well, it is a pleasure to meet your acquaintance. You are the first friendly face that we have seen in quite a while. Uh, yes. And we do we do appreciate your, your uh, courtesy in allowing us to stay with you. Yes, well, follow me. I'll let you in. And again, people will have questions for you. I uh, might be nicer than, than most that you would see. So uh, be prepared. My people mean well, though. They do. Okay. You, and she motions for you as you, she leads you guys into the camp. Does she tell uh, the truth when she says that? Uh, give me an insight check. All right. Also, I'd like to transform out of wild shape. Fifteen insight. You, you look at her, and and she seems to be telling the truth. Um, what you, the sense that you get from her is a, a pretty young energy. It, you're, you're getting a better look at her, and overall, she is um, uh, a pretty young. You'd say in her in her what you would think if you're comparing that to your human years and in her twenties, uh, but no no deception from her. No. And as you, so you're walking into the camp and you're getting a better look, you see all these metal structures, as I said, kind of being bound together by these red energies. And as you walk in, you, you get a better sense. You see the people in there as well. And you see just a kind of a handful of folks patrolling the camp. They have skin colors with shades of black, gray, and midnight blue. Uh, most of their eyes are this stark, glittery, pure white, but a few of them have certain colors glowing uh, in their eyes like Ori, and their physical forms, what you notice is they appear to have this mist and shadow seeping out of them. Long ago, we were something else. Uh, now, we call ourselves Shadow Genasi. And you shadow see her Genasi. look down at, at, you know, the shadow seeping out of her hands. Very interesting. Um, given that these sound like vaguely infernal traits, would this be anything that Delphini would be familiar with? Um, give me a history check, Delphine. Cool. Cool. She is not smart. Nine. <laughs> and you think back about she this. Um, the, the closest that you think of is uh, you are familiar with Genasi as a race of, of peoples, and you're certainly familiar, uh, as, as probably most of you are, that that race is often tied to a certain element. So you've, you've probably encountered some fire Genasi and some earth. Genasi, um, who seem to almost inhabit some of the qualities of the, of the elements or, uh, that they are associated with. Uh, but you okay. have never heard of Shadow Genasi. Okay, cool. She uh, actually dipped away, and you see her come back very quickly oh. with some bedrolls, and she starts setting up your whole area. And oh. she looks at you, Clement, and says, Sorry, what, what was that? Did you do this by magic? Yes, or? magic indeed. Um, it seems, uh, well, as you've probably been very clear here, we, uh, have control over metals, um, it's, uh, kind of a thing. It's quite metal. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, as this happens, she makes, uh, this, this, uh, cozy home for all of you. Roland, you begin to hear... Roland, what do you think of this one? I'm not sure we can trust her, but on the other hand, she's quite nice. Maybe she's, oh, maybe she's suitable marriage material for you, Roland. 
You really need to think about settling down at some point. <laughs> yes, but yes, I impress her. Or impress her with some music or something. Impress her with, with music? She's cute. Uh, this... You should tell me she's very cute. Tell her she's cute, Roland. Uh, at least for me, tell her she's cute. I'll tell her she's cute. Yes. What, what if we cute. all simultaneously tell her that she's cute? We should, we should. Or would I mean, that, that be might weird? Be kind of genuine, but all right. All right. Would that be well, weird? <laughs> uh, I think it would. Uh, you know, it would. You know, uh, maybe maybe we've uh, we've been uh, approaching this entire thing incorrectly. Maybe her offer uh, offer of uh, shelter and food and such is uh, no more than friendship for you, at least. Um, it, it seems it seems that uh, she and I we we have a, a special connection. Oh, um, oh yeah, you have a special yeah. connection. All right, yeah, go ahead then. And she comes and presents that to you all. You said you are hungry. Yeah, yeah, right here. She's amazing. Thank you so much for your hospitality. This is above and beyond. And as she hands a piece of bread to you, Roland, she gives a little smile. And I, I, I wink <laughs> oh. back as I, as I take the bread from her, and, uh, and. Do I, I... catch that? <laughs> Do I catch that? Um. She, give me a uh, give me a perception check. I'd allow I insight also, too if you prefer. But... I would also like to perceive this. Yeah, 17. you both uh, see it, it's a very subtle, but she just gives this little tiny smile as she hands that piece of food to Roland. And uh, so so with that, I I. Uh, linger with my hand just a little bit as she's giving it to us and I place my other hand on the back of hers I say Oni, uh, Ori uh, again we do appreciate your hospitality uh, you said you said that you had to be off to continue your guard but do you have but a moment to sit with us you asked of you asked of us and uh, even though even though we haven't known you long I feel like maybe we could share a little bit about ourselves and actually, as you ask that, she chimes in and says, well, I, I would love to know where are you from before I, before I get to ask too many questions. Uh, Ori, uh, I, I, I do appreciate this. Um, would, would, you, would you mind perhaps uh, giving us just, just a moment of privacy? That's it seems uh, this night, so please take your time. I've set your bedrolls up if, if you uh, want to get ready for bed or anything. Um, Look, I'll be I'll be in the next tent over, but uh, again, I have to get back to my duty soon. Yes, uh, we we will call on you in mere moments. Uh, I apologize again. Um, I just I just need to speak with my troop, please. Thank you, Ori. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Ori. Thanks for the food. It looks great. You're very very pretty, by the way. I like your yeah. clothing. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, yeah, hey cheek, cheek. That's 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 my line. Um, uh, well, you, bye, you bye. didn't take me too long to say anything. And she uh, bye, heard, bye, Ori. Bye. She heard Cheek's compliment. She gave a smile back to you, Cheek. Uh, <laughs> but I already rounded the corner by the time Roland was was just saying that. Uh, and I put my hand over my face. That was really smooth, I, Roland. I, I think I she likes elbow, you. <laughs> yeah, I elbow Roland in his side and I say, "Laying it on pretty thick with this one, aren't you, Roland? Uh, I'm, it didn't I'm work sorry. last time." Look, Cheek, um, <laughs> you're, you're the, the most, uh, quote-unquote, human contact I've had in in quite some time. Uh, I might be a little bit rusty with this. Uh, rest in peace, Rusty. R.I.P. Uh, rusty. R.I.P. Rusty. <laughs> well, How was our food? I mean, it was yeah. excellent. Very good. I would say yeah, we're doing yeah. quite well, then. Um, Delphine gets visibly agitated and starts um, pacing about the tent a bit and just shaking her head. Uh... No, no, we're we're finding a way back. Yes, thank you, Ori. This uh, this is a lot to process. To repay you your kindness in telling us your history, I believe that uh, I could shed some light on at least my own, uh, that you may learn to trust trust us and uh, get to know us a little bit better. I expect that our relationship may uh, 
may continue continue on to into the future. So, uh, do you, do you have time uh, to to hear a bit of our backstory? Please, I I would be honored. You go. And uh, with that DM, could you could you maybe back off the music just a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, entirely. I can. <laughs> Let me. Uh... <laughs> the music oh, no. is muted. Oh my the god, the chat is muted. Is, uh... Oh, here, actually, let me do it officially through the other one so it mutes it for you guys, too. All right, chat. all right, here we go, here we go. All right, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you know uh, completely <laughs> out of character here. I'm actually kind of shaking a little bit at this, so I hope that <laughs> Let's this turns do out it. Well. Right, so, it. So, so I, I sit down uh, next to the, the fire, which is presumably there, and we have uh, mm -hmm. the party now gathered around and we say, Now gather round, folks, I have a story to tell of a little known family named Verintel. The line, it goes back through ages untold. A family of secrets and smiles bitter cold. Oh, the wicked Verintel. Would that that family should burn in hell. For the actions they've done, nobody could tell. Fall into slumber, clan Verintel. They ruled with a fist forged of iron and gold. Their robes frigid white were a sight to behold. To those pure of blood they ruled justly and fair. But to those born of magic were frightened and scared. They rejected purveyors of magic arcane. Claim that those heathens were not but insane. Into the dungeons these demons were thrown. Not hearing the whispers from tunnels below. Oh, the wicked Verintel. Would that that family should burn in hell. For the actions they've done, nobody could tell. Fall into slumber, clan bear in tell. And out from the rubble, a child was spared. No longer surrounded by family share. Crumbled to ashes, his manner did fall. Cold and alone, he was tired and small. So he sailed across the wicked black seas, searching for remnants of scorned family. Through wind and fire, through desert and snow, where he'd end up, nobody could know. Oh, the wicked Verintel, would that that family should burn in hell For the actions they've done, nobody could tell Fall into slumber, clan Verintel She starts clapping wildly <laughs> And and at, while you <laughs> sung this, she her eyes were just locked onto yours Hearing the story that you told Oh my god, chat, everybody, what the <laughs> hell? <laughs> oh my god, guys. <laughs> chat says, vote, chat, you guys vote to say woo her with some music, and this is what you get. This is what you get <laughs> on Twitch Plays DD, you guys. <laughs> wow. We're <laughs> <laughs> getting it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> sorry, Roland, go ahead. give me a performance check with advantage right now. With advantage, okay. With advantage. All right, all right. I'm still kind that of shaking. Might be, uh, that so. might be, might be fake, like, <laughs> no. right there. Yeah, that was pretty outstanding. Wow. Uh, Twenty. <laughs> Is that a nat no, twenty minus? What? No, oh, I, I, I no, uh, Yeah, it's sixteen plus four. Yeah, okay. it's a dirty toy. Yeah, she, still. you, this was impressive. She 
You also conveyed the story of your people. Like you really feel like through her reaction that she understood what you were saying. Um, and she is right now like beaming with a large smile right at you. Wonderful. So you all walk together and you go towards the lake, which is just on one side of the camp. And as you approach, you you hear some distant singing as you just hear and uh, you see a bunch of fishing supplies and a group of people uh, they're, they're fishing some of them are actually practicing their sword fighting uh, others are sharing drinks uh, and there's this incredibly buff shirtless dwarf and I've been not let me swap you over PCs can see this too now <laughs> and he's sitting on this wooden wheelchair and stashed away on the wheelchair is an assortment of leather bags, there's a tricorn hat, and he has two axes on his sides. And you see him putting some fish into a net, into a, uh, from a net into a bucket, and he actually looks up at all of you, and you hear the singing, uh, the, the, the kind of group singing die down for a bit as he looks at you and says, Arr, so you be the newcomers, is that so? You want to help with some fishing? Uh, I hail from Zakara, the, the land of beautiful waters, but not as beautiful as our deserts. Wow. Then you must be a master fisherman. I, well, yeah. not so much, actually. Well, just learning the trade here. You see, I used to be the captain of the old Cutlass, the finest ship to ever sail the seven deserts. And uh, he goes on and gives you this very detailed description of, of how he built this boat and how he cut down the trees and, and measured everything like five times, uh, how he built the boat like up to three-fourths done and had his team disassemble the whole thing because it wasn't looking as good as he wanted it to uh, and then finally landed on, on the ship that he had. And you have just like this perfect vision of this beautiful wooden ornate ship um, with, with a, a dragon on the front as his headpiece and these large flowing sails. So and, is it back uh, home? Does it not work over forest and, and other types of planes? Well, you see, and he goes into and he describes like another 10 minutes of this detailed <laughs> rudder system for his boat. And he talks about how just how it's angled just perfectly. So it cuts through the sand with ease. My mind is exploding. How long have you been here, friend? Oh, me and the crew been here for 20 years, I think it'd be. But uh, time flies when you know a good song. Would you like to hear one? Yes. Oh. I'd yeah, love to. Yeah. I will. And you see him start banging on a on a barrel next to him, and he says, "Oh, Sally Brown, she's a gal for me, boys." And you see everyone around him turns to him, and they stop doing what they're doing, and you see them all kind of give a little hop, and they all say, "Roll, boys, roll, boys, roll," and and you see them all just start chanting together. It's down to Trinidad to see Sally Brown, boys. Roll, boys, roll, roll boys, roll. roll. Boys, and you see them all jumping on down. Um, and, and this looks clearly choreographed. Um, you see even some people like diving wow. over each other uh, as as the song continues. It's a pretty repetitive sand shanty uh, that you see them all get into. And then slowly it dies down and gets back to their roles as he goes. <laughs> well, what did you think? I, I'm looking to improve the singing. Any tips? And uh, at this moment, Roland, these voices rush into your head. And Cheek, you hear this again. Ah, what the hell is this guy? This is stupid and he's nuts. I know more about boats than him. But what, what should we tell him? Should we tell him that was rubbish like it was? No, Delphine gives rubbish. him a high five. That wasn't <laughs> gives rubbish. Right back. That was pretty good. I mean, they could have banged on the deck. But the dock, but that was pretty good. They have clearly practiced. Don't be so rude. Oh, Who wait. even are you? You can hear me too? Yes, oh, you're so wow. loud. This you whisper something. so loud. Oh, this is something indeed. Well, I, I was getting really bored talking to that guy. That Roland fella, he's not the best talker. Hey, oh, he's I, so can hear, I can still hear you. Yes, I know. Delphine, what the hell is that? <laughs> the two oh, of us just take a step back. 
Uh, so now, are these uh, are these men who sang in the chorus? Are they are they your men crew? and women? Uh, yes, I'm sorry, uh, men and women. Are they your crew from the Cutlass? Aye, indeed, from the old Cutlass. Yes, well, we were traveling on a, uh, and he goes into this very detailed story about how his ship, <laughs> how he was hired <laughs> into giving this awesome delivery of, of this huge chest of gold coins. He talks about how he actually snuck a few out um, uh, before making the delivery and that had, on the last leg, they had to travel through um, these this mountain pass that his ship couldn't go through. And he talks about how this miss took him here. Uh, it actually leads up, as he mentions, to a waterfall that drops down. And as he mentions the waterfall, he says, Oh, have you heard of the story of the Mad Wizard? Mad Wizard no, Club. If, if oh. this has done any anything like uh, your previous ditty, then I am on board. Pun intended. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Delphine is deeply confused as to why we are just hanging out with this pirate <laughs> instead why of like, not? looking for our way home. And uh, you see him kind of shake his head and uh, and get really serious as uh, as the music dies down slightly. And he says, "Well, legend has it that there were a powerful wizard." got pulled into these lands like the rest of us, and he points at all of you. A twist, it weren't a legend, for I saw him standing exactly where you be right now. Okay, what do you think of that I, opening? Do you think, did I uh, drop I, the twist too soon? Uh, I, I kind of stepped back and looked down at the spot where I was uh, standing, and I, I was just already enraptured by the story to the point that I just completely believed him. Well, this, this wizard, he had some crazy ideas of rallying up the people of Barovia against the ruler Strahd. And he spits on the ground as he says the name. He tried to recruit me right here, but I told him no thanks. I'd be in the business of staying alive, you see. Well, he rallied a group and stormed Strahd's castle. But twist, most of them were massacred and they didn't stand a chance. Thunder shook the mountainside. Great rocks tumbled down the wizard, down, tumbled down upon the wizard. But then a large farce field appeared in front of the wizard and saved him. And you wouldn't believe what happened next. Can you guess? Did he disappear? Wrong! Lightning from the heavens struck the wizard, but he stood his ground. And I could see their silhouettes in the moonlight play like a dance of the gods. And alas, when the devil strawed fell upon him, the wizard's magic couldn't save him. I saw him thrown down a thousand feet to his death. And that's the end of the tale. The party <clears throat> led by Ori Nalo, their, their new friend, had just passed by this bard at the campfire and entered the hut of the elder Madam Ava. And you entered inside and saw this dense library. And you just see this book, uh, this this library just filled with stacks of books. Uh, there, there's, um, there's some levitating in midair as the pages slowly turn through the book. And you see an assortment of trinkets and old tomes, such as a beautiful brass coin a simple silver ring, a wooden boomerang, and a small vanity mirror amongst a bunch of other uh, little gemstones and, and, and jewelry. And at that moment, the voices seep inside your minds, Roland and Cheek. Oh, this place looks fancy. I Look, yeah, I don't see cool. a sign that says do not take or do not touch. So which one would, which one do you guys want to take? Um, what are you guys talking about? Uh, what? Clement, are, are you not able to hear this? Because apparently, whatever this is, is spreading. Uh, no. What, what yeah. is this? Hear this? What do you mean? Uh, so, I, I think, I think for now, uh, perhaps whatever is happening is meant only for myself and for Cheek. Um, oh, okay. All right, that's fine. That's fine. We can have secrets too. Come on, Clement. 
And we go, <laughs> we go step off to the side and whisper to ourselves. You know, I wanted the boomerang, but uh, well, let's take, why, why not take both? Let's take the mirror and the boomerang. Uh, all right, Cheek, okay, why yeah. don't, all right, you wanted the mirror, I'll, I'll mm. grab the boomerang. Okay. All right, ready? One, mm. two, three, and reach up and grab the boomerang. And you grab them and yeah. it's totally normal. And in the center of this room, you see emerge Ori and uh, an older woman who uh, approaches and you actually see they're pulling out this, this large wooden desk that was off the, to the side and moving it to the center of the room. And you see um, them approach as Ori bows very deeply at, at the woman and um, uh, gives uh, Roland a little smile and walks out of the tent as uh, the woman looks at you and says, Come in, come in, come in, come in. Uh, would you be surprised that I foresaw your, your coming? Uh, and with, with that, I, I try to replicate Ori's bow, her, her deep bow, as, as much as possible. And I say, you must be Madam Ava. We've heard about you as well. Uh, you you seem wise to have foreseen our coming. <laughs> My name is Eva Col Scorches Salvis Glacia Inanos, but most people here call me Madam Eva, and you are more than welcome to do the same. Yeah, and uh, and Rusty as well. Do do you know Rusty Shacklebird? I, I know many people in these lands, and I. And you see her put her head, her hand on her forehead, and I can foresee even more. But uh, I've never heard of a rusty shackled foot. You see, I specialize in reading fortunes. And though with divination as such, nothing can be for certain. Would you like your fortunes read? Yes. We had no allies, no support of any sort. And we suffered for it. We suffered for well over a hundred years at the hands of the Barovians. But look, we try to pay the buck forward. Is that what they say in, in common? Uh, we try to do uh, spread joy here. So the, the divination, the reading would be absolutely free, of course. And uh, some some of you guys give me a, a history check, or I'll even take a, a raw like intelligence check if you'd prefer. Um, Sobi, would my background as a courtier come in come in handy there? Um, y you know what? Yes, let's let you can roll with advantages. You had some contacts with other uh, regions and kingdoms. Net twenty. But Clement immediately from this, um, and it does add up with what Ori has told you before. These Electrum Mines, which is like a, a silver alloy, uh, they were well known, uh, this, this race of Earth and Fire Genasi people, um, for, for mining that and trading it throughout the regions. And um, they had quite a, a large civilization going there. Um, and you guys know that uh, much of that civilization still exists. And from the group of people that you see here, you, your best guess would be that, you know, a portion of, of that area or even a small, a relatively small group, uh, depending on how many originally came over, were sucked into this land. Uh, sprinkle some dust in front of you. Um, from, from the looks of it, it has like no magical properties. It's just like, um, dust. like <laughs> dust. And I... I can do something unique here. I can give you all a group reading, and I can also give you each individual readings. But um, two words of caution. One is I can only give these readings once. And yeah, she puts. Artwork is amazing. Right? Yeah. Shout out to Maki, <laughs> she drew Madam Ava, and you'll see more from her. And. She puts five cards down on the table here. And you see her move her hands over them and close her eyes as she pauses for a moment and says, ah, it seems the cards believe you have some sort of large journey ahead of you. 
They speak of your home and of a great war. And she looks at Roland as if peering into the depths of your mind. And she says, this card tells of history. Knowledge of the ancients will help you better understand your enemy. And she flips it over and you see the monk. The treasure that you seek is hidden behind the sun in the house of a saint. With that, she flips it right over and says, the Avenger. Her eye, her head and eyes, uh, without moving her head, actually, her eyes slowly glance at Clement. I sense great conflict in your soul. And she looks at you intently. Will your past haunt you even here? Regardless. Oh, I'm sorry. Regardless, you will need strength to protect your, yourself and your friends. This card speaks of a powerful force for good and protection. A symbol, a holy symbol of great hope. The treasure lies, and she closes her eyes. I see a dragon's house in hands once clean, but now corrupted. She presses three fingers onto this card, as you see her pause for a moment. I see a faceless god. He awaits you at the end of a long and winding road, deep, deep in the mountains. It is there that you will find the treasure that you seek. Fourth card, the artifact. This time, she places her full hand on this card, as if feeling every detail of the image. And for a few moments, she takes a very deep breath. I see a man, a, a proud man, perhaps an entertainer with a, with a monkey. But looks may deceive, for well, this man is more than he seems. Cheek. This fortune is for you. I recommend that you seek out this person. And she flips this card as you see the marionette. Your enemy, whoever that may be, is a creature of darkness whose powers, and you see her frown and wince at this realization, are beyond mere mortality. This card will lead you to him. Down and sorry, Delphine, did you pick already? I did not. And she looks at you and says, what say you? I think I like the left one. And I kind of point to it. And as you lean forward looking at it, you feel compelled to touch one of the cards. And as you do, <laughs> It's a bright summer day with a pristine blue cloudless sky. Delphini, you're standing outside of a large stone manor, almost like a small castle. In front of you is a tan-skinned tiefling with short horns, silver eyes, and a tattoo of an arrow on one side of his face. Of course, it's your brother, Tomond. Uh -huh. And he says to you, come on, Delphini. Are you telling me that you're going to spend your whole life stuck in that water deep doing whatever mom and dad say, please come with me? You know it's not that easy. You know. He puts his hand, his head in his hand. You, they're you're, always find... like, you're always like this. They're going to find you. They're going to find me. What do you expect me to do here? <sighs> Expected more of you. Give me a persuasion, persuasion check. And he looks at you and he and he shakes his head. You know that they'll connect it with the uh, with every black market in town. Groups that are even worse than that, right? I know. You think I want to stay here? I mean, you think what, I want that? We're talking murder here. Are you okay with that? I've never been okay with that. Where are you gonna go? 
I don't know. And he finishes that hug as you feel um, a little weight in one of your pockets. You reach in and it's a small journal. And at that moment, we've moved. You're now in the middle of a partially destroyed camp in a thick pine forest. A huge insectoid monster with hairy limbs and large antenna rushes towards you. You look behind you and you see Clement. I need both of you to make deck saving throws right now. Okay. <laughs> what? Oh, oh my god. How, how does this keep happening? How many is that in our. Oh my oh, god. That is third crit fail. Oh, oh. You see this massive, uh, you know, insect like monster rush towards you as it crashes into both of you um dealing 12 damage to each of you no need to mark this on yeah. on your sheets as it pushes you out of the way you fall onto the ground it continues forward um and at this moment you you know where you are you're on a mission right now you've come here with three others Elkoris, the half-elf bod, Sumazi, the half-orc fighter, and From, the human rogue. The monster charges forward, knocking you out of the way, and with its large pincer-like arms, slices From in half as he, yeah. as he, this monster crushes, crashes into a tree and tears the roots out of, this, out of the ground as you hear Chris, it falls onto the ground. You see Elkoris pinned down on the ground by another one of these monsters in this camp and you hear Sumazi's blade clashing against metal in the distance. Right in front of you are several bags filled with gems. Elkaris, on the ground, forest floor, looks at you and says, Help! Help me! Please! What do you do? I rush him. I rush him. I whip out my, uh, my hammer and try to bust this leg in half. Give me, uh, give me an attack roll. Nice. Clement, what do you do? Oh, 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 yell out to Delphine. Delphine, don't go! Just take the gems and leave! Oh, God's sake! Like. Oh. Delphine <laughs> rushes forward, smacks the monster on the side, as it cracks is some of its hard exterior um, shell like skin. And the distance, you see Sumazi's blade fling from his hands and into the air, crashing onto the floor's floor as you hear as he's gutted from the bottom up, falling down to the ground. And you guys hands on the back. With just Clement to, pulling to Delphine, you trying to struggle back, seeing that your friend Elkaris, or at least your comrade, is still there alive, fighting this monster alone now. You and Delphine, you and Clement grab those bags, and the last thing you see is as you yell at him, pulling against him, you run into the forest. And we once again move. It's the middle of the night. The silence is broken by a cough. <laughs> and you hear a man panting as the oscillating lantern light brushes against him you see that he's tied to a chair and covered in blood and bruises and from the shadows steps forward Dofel Zoras the western commander of the Thai Manthair forces and he says tell us what you know and the suffering." Will ends. And the man looks at him. I hope you burn in the nine hells of Bator. As he spits in Dofel's direction. So be it. Clement, cut off his hand. Grab the knife and say, if you don't comply, this is what you get. And I'll do as I'm told. And as you raise that, that knife over his hand, the man looks at you and says, you will all pay for your treachery. And you slice his hand off as we're back in Madame Ava's tent. And Delphine, you shake your head, realizing that no time has passed, that you, you've gotten some sort of, of vision from, from that card. 
Delphine takes a step back and takes in a deep, shaky breath, getting used to her surroundings again, and uh, gives perhaps a more respectful bow to Madame Ava this time around, and says, Thank you very much. You too draw your hand forward and touch the card. And as you do, Roland, we are now in a different locale. It's a warm spring night and you're at the outskirts of a massive city, the one that you've grown up in. Someone roughly tosses you to the ground and you see two cloaked figures overhead. And the first says, who are you? Who are you? sword drawn out to your throat at this point as the second one interjects putting a hand on the first Andalyn he's not one of them as the explosion cuts him off and the next thing you hear is Doc before fire envelops all of you Roland give me a deck saving throw uh, okay uh, sorry I screamed too early um. <laughs> <laughs> the next thing you hear is the thud of earth below you as you're now in a blood-soaked battlefield. Shouts and clangs of metal ring in the distance, and you can barely b- breathe right now as there's a dead warg on top of you. You look to your right, and you see Cheek, who's fighting a man who's limping right now, dressed in a large fur coat, wielding a massive greatsword. As he swings it, and you see Cheek dodge out of the way, Roland, I need you to make a constitution saving throw, and Cheek, I need you to make a deck saving throw as the man swings once again your direction. Oh, oh not one. I'm not the only one. <laughs> Roland, right you're with you. pushing with all your might Thank against you. this warg, but it's been felled on top of you, and your arms give out as, <laughs> as the wind kicks out of your body and and the world actually starts to blur around you cheek you nimbly dodge out of the way as you have an opening to hit this person what do you want to do yeah i'm gonna swing let's see it give me an attack roll or anything you want to do am i two-handed oh 11. You swing, and with the limping and the weakness that this person's already had and the, and the opportunity you've gotten, you still find the perfect opening as you smack him right in the side. As, as he falls down to his knees um, uh, and, and drops his sword. At this moment, Roland, you're, you're reaching out to Cheek, and you see that, uh, that Roland's losing air quickly. Can I grapple the wolf off of him? Like- yeah, give me a strength check to try to push that. Okay. Okay. It's dead, you said, right? It is dead, yeah. You're pushing with all your strength, and it just doesn't seem to budge as the person on the ground, steadying himself now with his greatsword, gets up one more time and goes to swing at you. And that is a nat 20 baby. He (laughs) swings and slices up your side, dealing 20 slicing damage and pushes you back. What do you want to do? I am actually going to cast uh, the he- um, healing word. Uh, yeah, healing word. So at least if Roland is losing uh, any kind of health. And so Roland cheek steps forward and you see her clutching on this staff as green energy starts shooting out and you see her close her eyes as a little wave of force shoots out and you see it okay um, so it'd be five awesome and you instantly feel uh, uh, able to breathe a little bit better give me another strength roll roland unless you want to do something Uh, else you do have your hands available right so so uh with that one breath i go cheek get away and then i cast uh i cast uh thunder wave uh to just try and propel this warg off of me And uh, so, yes, I, I cast Thunder Wave. You cast that, and you hear a loud crack of a... As you hear it, poof, the warg shoots off of you and even uh, cuts into it as it falls away into pieces. So, uh, like, with since Cheek is kind of bleeding from her side, she holds her side, and she puts her hand out, and she goes, 
and uh, you know, from and her hand. In particular, hand... I should have said, "Show me what yeah. you got," because this is a killing oh. blow right now. Oh, sweet. Nice. Okay. Uh, so, out of her left hand, uh, from her tattoos, that it, they glow bright white and uh, sort of so frost kind of, you know, small little frosty hands come from her fingertips and go for the guy that's attacking her and it goes straight into the his already wounded side and just starts freezing him from that point onward. And you see the ice spread as he looks down and it soon spreads up. And you see it get past his chest as it shatters and he falls to the ground in pieces. At this moment, there's a man um, um, fighting that you recognize on your side of this battle. And he is reaching up towards you, Cheek. I can't, I can't make it out. <laughs> and you look and, and he's, he lost an entire arm as he's crawling towards you. My, my, my brother needs me. <laughs> Well then, I guess as my bonus action, uh, I'm going to healing word uh, this guy as well. I, I can't, oh, I can't mend his arm though. Um, is there any way before I do healing word, can I try and at least, you know, patch up? Is it a, like, what is it looking like? A stump? Is it like, you know, how, how bad? It is. How bad is it? Sliced off cleanly, um, and okay. he, he looks to be in shock. He's not even clutching it, as you just see blood squirting out. Um, I need to medicine him. Uh, I'm going to patch him up, so I can at least. Yeah, give me a medicine start. check. Yes. And you can do healing ward as well if you'd like. And I would like to also do healing ward. That's a fat so twenty right there. At 20. You channeling your medicinal properties, you see Cheek just throw her staff down as immediately she pulls out some herbs and, and other um, and kind of infused gauzing and neatly ties that up, says a, a word of, you see light emit from that and we once again move. And then another five for the healing word. Awesome. And you do see serenity over this man's face as we blur back out. You are now in an oak forest, and it's just past midnight. This site is oh too familiar. With flames around you, a massive boulder hurtles through the air towards Clement. But Alatar, your wizard companion, pushes him out of the way and is crushed before your eyes. You all push the boulder to move him and get him just out, but his time has come. Roland, the others begin marching forward as you, as you may remember, search Alatar's body. And as you do, you found a ruby amulet. Immediately as you touched it, your scars burned and you hear a whisper in your ear. And at this moment, you don't hear words exactly as you just hear voices and shouting uh, echoing in your head as they seem to compel you uh, as your thoughts gravitate towards where you want to put this amulet. And as as I consider where to put the amulet, uh, I, I think gravely about what the bag of holding can contain. Uh, <laughs> 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 and I lament the fact that he is, he is <laughs> large foot by four foot square. You glance down uh, <laughs> Alatar and wonder one last time if he'll, you're like, you know what? I swear he's going to fit in that bag of holding. Everyone just said no and went on. But let me look at this one more time. As you hear a voice in your head, just don't put me in your pocket, you savage. And and with that, uh, I, I place my hand on his uh, compressed chest and I say, Alatar, we will carry on your legacy. We thank you for your service. And you will live on in spirit, in music, and in our hearts. And with that, I put on the amulet uh, and kind of tuck it under my cowl so that it's not immediately visible, but I have it close to my heart. And Alatar lays there lifeless. And as you put that amulet on, your attention's drawn towards it as the next thing you feel is a hand on your leg as you Look down and you see Alatar's eyes open one last time. And he says, coughing, <laughs> Do not be deceived. <laughs> they 
They will come for you. I think... Uh, I think it is the key. And his eyes close a final time. <laughs> and we're back in Madame Eva's tent. She looks at you just as she did Delphini, getting a sense that you have seen something further. She, uh, <laughs> yeah. she looks at you and says, these are sending stones. Whoever holds one can communicate with the other. And Ooh. I have made these myself and imbued them Ooh. with my own magic. So you'll actually be able to communicate with me if you so desire. Please, take them. And and Ori, and I, I put my hand on her shoulder and and put my put my other hand kind of under her chin and raise it up to, to look at me and I say, yes, we are nomads, we are travelers, but we have things in our future that lie beyond the surrounding of your encampment here. Give me a charisma what? check. <laughs> oh, I'm so good at charisma. It's so... Oh, oh that's so bad. Wait, 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 you did save. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, uh, where are we? Sorry about that. I hope I get you a better roll. Oh, snap. Maybe. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I'm so sorry. She... It's so hard As you put your hands you on her, failed. she she moves away, and your hands kind of fall. Look, um, you should, you guys should, you should leave. Um, and by that I mean, you have, uh, I'm sure she gave you some amazing fortune reading, and you have other places to be, it sounds like. Um, you're, oh, I... Look, I don't mean it like that. You're more than welcome to come back here anytime. Uh, and we we often make route along the river here, some occasionally up to the falls. Um, come by. Come by sometime. Ori, you can come with us. You know this land better than any of us, and you could guide us where we need to be. You can tell us where to go, where to avoid, uh, you can tell us the history that you know of this land. You'd be an invaluable asset to our group. My people are here. I I have a role here. There's things that I do. I help here. It, having someone just leave like that would be a burden on everyone else. And, and I'm also, I, I want to stay here. Our mission is, is we, we are going to find a way out of here. We are going to get... Uh, back to our families, we are going to get back to our homes. You can't tell me that you've completely given up hope in this belief that you can get back to your family, or uh, to your homestead. I've lost one person trying this already. I'm not willing to put anyone else at risk. And if this is something that you want to do of your own accord, by no means I cannot stop you. I do advise that you take this idea and push it away. Yes, maybe you have some sort of journey to go on that Madame Ava helped you with, but changing the fates of this land, I do, I do not think it involves that, unfortunately. And then I turn oh. away and I go, I go fuck. <sighs> wow, Roland, yeah, you really messed that one up. You're doing a really good job, Roland. Cheeky, he really messed that one up, don't you think? Yeah, he's doing. He's doing a great job, I think. Delphini kind of puts a puts a hand on Ori's shoulder and goes, "Thank you so much for your hospitality. I don't know what we would be doing here without you." As you look around and you see most of the fishing gear and supplies have been tidied up uh, and put together, and you see Taurus walking over to you, it seems like his people are getting ready to to move on to another area. And he walks over and puts a hand on your back and says, Well, laddie, not knowing the direction, well, sounds like you're in need of this. Pulls out into one of his leather bags and pulls out a map. And he hands you this map. Let me show you what the PCs can see. Ah, yes, this map 
made by my yours truly, actually. I'm quite uh, talented at this, and uh, I don't have every marking on here, but uh, it's got most of it. So, look, I think you're going to need this a bit more than I do. And he hands it to you. I like you. You remind me a lot of myself when I was like a baby or something. Like a little baby, like you know, the one I like when I was crying a lot. Taurus, Taurus, I, I get it, I get it. <laughs> and so, I'll tell you this, but you, you tell Saul this, and you won't, you won't sleep like a baby, that's for sure. Look, my lips are sealed. Ooh. That night, when I saw the wizard fighting, I'll tell you this: I certainly think it was that wizard, and I do believe it was the devil Strahd fighting him, but. It was a cloudy night, and when I saw that lightning strike, the clouds passed over, and I tried to get a better look. Look, by the time the clouds passed, nothing was there. Do I think that this wizard survived against the embodiment of pure evil? No. Is it possible? Perhaps. But look, and he takes out his rapier, to your throat, you tell a single soul that version of the story, and I will kill you, your friends, your family. Any pet? Do you have any? Do you have any pets? Uh, <laughs> any I'll let you adopt uh, a pet, and I'll kill it. And unflinching, I I look down his rapier, and I just take two fingers and kind of slowly push it off to the side. I say. For the kindness that you've given me in telling me the story, as I mentioned, my lips are sealed. And, and at this moment, can't... Roland, you hear <sighs> the voices seep into your mind, cheek you as well, as you see this wagon paused in the distance through, through the mist, and you do see a dirt path that seems to lead up towards the falls, as the voices in your mind say, Ah, what do you think, a wagon? Help us get there a lot faster. What do you think? Should we hop yes. in? Ask them for a ride. Uh, or Clement looks like he could use the exercise. Yeah, I want to, I I don't <laughs> Well, I also don't want to really walk. I'm I'm the shortest one here, so I have to take many steps. So I'm, wagon is preferable. I, I'm sure that the wagon does not plan to make a stop at the falls. Um oh, we just possible cheek what do you what would what's your preferred option if you could pick anyone that you want oh definitely the cart i'm only five All foot right, my then, legs are perfect. so short we're gonna walk i compel you <laughs> to walk and you feel the urge to pass up this oh, wagon as you see cheek, the figure yeah. turn back towards looking forward and the wagon continues on into the distance. The, the four of you move up this dirt path, still seeing that wagon trail on as you hear the Fine. roar. Then, wait, oh. I want to transform into my wild shape then, if we're going to walk. You transform and you hear the rush of water far in the distance. And You're not I'm there yet. I'm going to transform into a new form. And as Cheek transforms, we're going to end it there. Of course. Thank you guys. Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.